Hi Scorpio, welcome to your August 2017 love reading. It's Raina here. I had to pause for a moment because time is going so quickly. I'm recording this in July and August is right around the corner. the very same two cards for Pisces. So, what is the focus card or the heart of the matter of this reading? Well, it's a man. He may be, <laughs> I know some people are going to say, oh, why does it have to be a man? It's a man who, because, and the reason I say that is because, you know, people don't want it to be limited by gender but this but the court cards i'm going to just do that um this is a, a businessman he's really like big time he could be your boss he could be the head of a bank the head of some business could be your father. Kings can be fathers. He could be the father of your child. Um, he could just be an earth sign individual that is a very, um, well, he has his, he's very powerful in his own right for whatever reason. Maybe he just owns his power. So that we're talking about Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, maybe a lot of that in their chart if it's not the actual sun sign. This is a very, this man is very consistent. He's not a flighty type of a person. And um, this may be a relationship that is actually a good one. Now, if he's a Taurus, that is your opposite sign, Scorpio. So... It's very interesting. But in the past, we have the Seven of Wands. Um, this is a card of feeling on the defensive. This may have been you in a past relationship, always having to explain why you do what you do or who you are to somebody. I was I got this card in a different position for Pisces. And I was saying that this is always the red flag of... A toxic relationship and it doesn't have to be just in romantic terms any relationship where you feel like the other person constantly doesn't understand you because sometimes that can be a ploy that people use to keep you on your toes to keep you you know if somebody keeps you explaining yourself that means that you are never just uh, calm and feeling accepted you're always feeling misunderstood you know or dis uh, somebody disapproving of you as you are at this moment um this could have been a fire sign aries leo sagittarius but note that this is in the past position so this could have uh, you know, uh, unlike um, Pisces, I got this in this p in the past position. So that tells me that you may have said the hell with this. I'm not going to stay in this type of relationship. You may have been able to tell that it was a toxic relationship. And so you just bailed from that. And um, so interestingly enough, and this is like a card... 
um, to indicate that all systems are go in a new relationship, and it's a pa it's a very passionate relationship. Now, this could be it's interesting because I just got done telling you about this um, person, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. Maybe it is, and I'm thinking Leo, <laughs> um, another fixed sign that you seem seem to gravitate towards, but. Perhaps the King of Pentacles is the one who's the problem. Even though they're very dependable financially and things like that, maybe they're, you know, acting like you're not good enough for them because they had this impressive job or something and they think that you're not good enough. And um, so you're gonna, going to be with the person who's the fire sign. I don't know. Um, maybe the father of your child dis is disapproving of you for some reason. And the interesting thing about Scorpio, Scorpio is a very powerful sign. So Scorpios are not the type of people to go, I mean, typically, obviously, to go, oh, wow, I'm not okay. Well, um, and then try to twist in the pretzel to be something that somebody wants you to be. Typically, he'll just say, see you later. <laughs> So whoever this person was, maybe you said goodbye. And that might have been the, the earth sign individual. Maybe they were just um, judging you too harshly. In the spiritual message, message from the universe, we have the eight of pentacles, somebody who's really <clears throat> a perfectionist. But this could be you, and it, of course it's pe pentacles, so it could be a continuation of that card right above it that maybe you were in a relationship with somebody where you were always the one who was trying to improve yourself. And that was the dynamic, that you were the problem. And this is not an uncommon thing. You know, sometimes people try to give others the impression that they are um, perfect and that the other person is hopelessly imperfect. And some of you may have bought into that. I, I think I made an observation before about Scorpio that relationships, especially romantic relationships, may be the one Achilles heel of Scorpio where they have a tendency to be vulnerable. And perhaps this is the area where you allow yourself to you know, how can I put it, capitulate, um, do everything you can, which is what the Eight of Pentacles says to me, do everything you can to, to, to you know, make the other per person approve of you or what have you. And um, I would say to you, and I think that the spiritual message is saying, be careful, <laughs> If you ever feel like you're uh, being asked to do all this work on yourself and the other person is, is the one who is dictating this and the, the implication can be, yeah, you're really screwed up. You, you, better, you have to do this, that, and the other thing in order for me to really give you a chance. But of course, they don't have to do anything because they're already perfect. If somebody tries to create that scenario in some way, um, it'd be very wise to, you know, kind of notice that and, and see if you can detect some kind of agenda, agenda at play where they are trying to put you in that defensive posture, which is what the seven of Penta or, um, wands is all about. The uh, challenge is the moon card. This can indicate that there's something going on um, behind the scenes that you don't know about. Maybe somebody is um, trying to act holier than thou or like above board and they're really the ones doing everything and they're trying to make you, they're putting you through the paces, but really they're the ones who are not that reliable, that are kind of iffy. And you may think that it's all your problem. Um, there could be a situation surrounding the 
um, the full moon or the new moon. I would say especially with the full moon because that tends to bring revelations. So let's see. The, the full moon in August will be on August 7th and that will be in Aquarius. So what house is that for you? Fourth house maybe? Um, that could be that you find out something. Now that could be within your own um, household. Usually when I think of marriages, I think of seventh house matters. And um, there's nothing along those lines for that. I mean, of course, depending on your individual natal charts, which may differ quite a bit from if you're watching this for your sun sign. But, um, but look to those uh, new and full moons um, to see if there's any kind of, um, I don't know, revelation, especially around that full moon secrets uncovered because the moon can be about secrets somebody being deceptive and and i guess i don't know if i was just rambling but my point is that sometimes people who are being deceptive try to act like you're the one that's being deceptive the advice or the um what is coming in is represented by the king of swords this could be about seeking a good uh, attorney, legal team, if, if that applies to your situation. You could be dealing with a, yeah, if it's the father of your child or your husband, um, that could be a situation where it's very embroiled because if there's a child involved especially, um, it, may, it may be something that the other party is using against you. To try to, yeah, I didn't even think about that because of the the pentacles. The, the person could be kind of trying to use money to intimidate you. Maybe you've maybe you're married to somebody who had who makes a lot of money, but they've threatened to cut you off, and so that has discouraged you from possible legal action. And maybe you don't have the money to hire an attorney on your own. But it's possible that some of you will get some pro bono situation going on, or maybe you'll just seek somebody who has that knowledge of the law. The king of the king of swords can be somebody who is very knowledgeable about something that takes specialized training. And in this type of situation, I typically think of the legal profession. Um, this could be also a boss who is, uh, or some kind of a supervisor. If you are involved with your boss, you may go to the human resources manager and you may say, this person's threatening to fire me because I want to break off a relationship with them. You know, there's all kinds of different scenarios and you may have to go to somebody else who is in a position of authority to kind of deal with your situation. But, um, you know, the idea of father may be very big for you right now, and you may see the connection. You may draw connections between your problems. Uh, if you, for instance, if you're a woman, well, you could be a man who is dealing with men uh, romantically, and you're also seeing father issues, you know? It doesn't have to be just women. But it's like this idea of, like, Maybe connecting the dots and saying, oh, wow, this is where this comes from. Especially if you had a father who was very prominent. And, and even like if they had money, they used that as, a, as a, a leveraging tool. You may have kind of unconsciously gotten involved with your boss because of that or somebody else who tries to, to kind of take power. Um, take control by using whatever is at their disposal where they can lord it over somebody else. The outcome is the Eight of Cups, and this is about leaving what no longer serves you. I don't know if this card specifically connects to 
um, Scorpio, because you are the eighth house, so there's the eight, and cups is water signs. So, but definitely I could uh, feel something like that because especially of all the water signs, Scorpio is very intense, you know, not just feeling things very deeply, but also being very particular. Maybe it's because you're a fixed sign where it's like when you really like something, you like it, but when you really don't, you don't. It's almost like <laughs> um, you don't have a lot of gray area. So when you know you're not feeling something or someone, you are capable of leaving. If you can get past the, the, the need to uproot and change. That's the only thing that you don't like is the change to your schedule, the change to your life. Uh, but the actual need to leave something that is not fulfilling you emotionally is totally within your comprehension. And if you can, if you can get past that inertia or that fear of change, I think that some of you will leave someone, maybe not within the month of August, but we are having eclipses in August. It's a very change driven time. Sometimes the fallout plays out later, um, not necessarily within that month, but later on in that cycle. And you can see radical changes that occur in people's lives in the aftermath. So we'll see what happens for you, Scorpio, but change can be very um, helpful in raising your vibration because when you're kind of in that inert state, it, it can be like this sense of, um, what would you call it, being in a rut where you're not really growing and you're not really expanding yeah well that is growing but you're not really you're not really engaging with life you're just treading water and you are a very passionate person so you want that totality of experience and uh, i think that you're going to find it you know seek and you shall find the ace of wands can show that a new relationship that lights your fire is is there and it's per perhaps you're the one that's standing in the way of that because you're still hung up on somebody else. So as soon as you make that decision to leave, then other avenues may totally open up for you. I hope you enjoy this, Scorpio. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. I hope your August is a, uh, a, very, is a game changer in a positive way. Take care. Bye.